Hello there everyone, it is TIJ and welcome to a new FM19 team guide. Today it's the turn of Manchester United and I'm going to be assessing their squad, transfers they've made, dynamics, training and the tactics in which you should choose for Man United. Also, we're going to be looking at some transfers you could possibly make to bolster the United squad. So let's get straight into it now. The 17-18 to 18 season was the best finish that United have had since they won the league under Ferguson, but... Some fans are very dissatisfied with Jose Mourinho, and I'm not surprised at the way he plays his football. So you might want to come into Manchester United and change things up a bit, which is exactly what I've done with a tactic, but we'll go into that a little bit later. But let's be honest, Manchester United have got an absolutely fantastic squad. We have to only look at some of the players that they've got. David De Gea, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Lukaku, on his day, one of the best strikers in the world. We've got Paul Pogba, who possibly is the best midfielder in the world. Marcus Rashford, who has come in through the youth system, played first by Van Gaal, and he's very much an emerging player with bags of potential. We've got Alexis Sanchez, who hasn't played well at United so far, but again, could be fantastic. And we've got the likes of Juan Mata, Matic, and some very useful players in the squad. And it's fair to say there's a, a nice mix of youth and quality in the squad. I mean, Luke Short is only 23. Um, we've got some other players. We've got Rashford, who's only 20. McTominay, Pereira, Martial, Lindelof. Um, but if you look, there's, there's, there's a fair amount of players that are under the age of 25, so pot plenty of potential to be had there. But let's first look at the dynamics of this squad. We've got three team leaders at Manchester United. We've got Valencia, David De Gea and Paul Pogba. And Valencia is approaching now at the end of his career. He's 32 years old and he's an experienced fullback, which is exactly where he should play, not on the wing. Um, he's a team leader, delighted to be at the club, but just to add, he's not going to be there for much longer, which begs the question, who's going to be replacing him at right back? Well, there's seven players apparently who can play at right back, Ashley Young being one of them, that's a bit of a weird one, but who's this Diego Dallo? He's just joined the club from Porto for 20 million and perhaps might be Mourinho's replacement for um, Valencia in the long term. So that might be a position that Dallo has get sorted, uh, if I butchered his name, I apologise. But apparently Ashley Young can also play there, but bear in mind that time's not in his, on his side as well. So there might need to be a backup on that right-back position here, perhaps. Is there anyone in the under-23s who can do that in the future? Fosu Mentz is a good player, actually. He's on loan at Fulham. And if he plays well there, again, he could be a backup. But it might be worth signing a player to get into that squad. But if we look at the dynamics a little bit further, not the tactics, the dynamics first, there's a lot of influential players. You've got the likes of Young, Mata, Sanchez, Phil Jones, Smalling, Lukaku, Fellaini, Herrera, Lingard, and Romero. And there's a good spread of leadership in the players. So I wouldn't be too bothered about that. You've got De Gea and Pogba who are approaching the peaks of their careers. It seems like a, a familiar theme in terms of the dynamics at clubs. You've got one player who's a bit older reaching their retirement, and you've got two that are very much reaching their peak. Um, but they're all very established in the squad. Now, we've got a big social group in terms of its core. I don't really look too much, though, at the social groups because they change massively over time, depending on who you bring in and bring out. So you shouldn't really look too much at the social groups, unless, of course, there's a problem at the club with one of the social groups or something like that. So let's get into tactics then. Now, this might be a bit controversial because the Man United style is usually park the bus, but Gegen Press is becoming ever more popular in the Premier League. And I think it would suit Manchester United, you know, because at the moment, well, they can't get any better, they can't get any worse than the way they're playing. But let's go through the squad that I've picked. Now, De Gea is in goal, no brainer. Valencia, Boye, Rojo, and Shaw at the back, but obviously in the future, Dallo can go there instead of Valencia. So we'll put him there for the moment. But we've put them as wing backs as opposed to complete wing backs because we want them to stay back a little bit because you've got Rashford and Lingard who will be pushing forward on the wings. Just to add, an entirely English wing, which will be lovely. Fellaini and Pogba in the middle. Now, Fellaini is a player that I absolutely detest being a Liverpool fan. And I detest him anyway, but Fellaini, I'll tell you something. He, he, he's useful. He's got very good He's got very good teamwork, very good balance. His fitness is very good. He's got very much jumping reach. And he's heading up. I'd be very good at corners. And P, he's just a solid player. I think Fellaini in a squad, he, he's very, well, he, he's, he's outspoken. He's, he's not quiet. But he can be quiet on a pitch. And then all of a sudden, produce something. You think, how has he done that? But if you look at their attackers, they've got Lingard, Rashford, Mata and Lukaku. You could change any of those players. You could put Rashford and you could put Sanchez in. You could put Martial in instead of Lukaku, potentially. And you can fiddle around with that till you get a good one in. But I think that Rashford's going to be one that you need to use. With Sanchez and Martial not really doing too much of Manchester United. But you could look at them putting them in, in the near future. And really, it's all about rotation. Manchester United, another club in the Champions League, FA Cup and League Cup. So, again, it's, it's a team that you could look at to possibly um, rotate quite a bit. It all depends on injuries as well. I mean, if you look already, Dallow 
and Rojo have already picked up injuries. You've got Dallow out for three to six weeks. You've got Romero out for six months. Rojo out for five weeks and Valencia out for four weeks. So injuries will always play a part in Football Manager. But in terms of the tactics so far, it looks pretty good to me. Um, and there's plenty of rotational options. We've got two uh, at centre-back. We've got Lindelof, uh, Valencia and Young at right back. We've got Fred Herrera, McTominay and Pereira at central midfield. And we've got Sanchez and uh, Martial in the attacking options as well. But you might look to offload some of those players. I don't know what you guys feel about some of these players. But for me, that's probably the 11 I would go for. So if we look at training, I don't particularly look at training so far. Because to be honest, I've only just picked up the game. So I don't particularly know a lot about training, but what I'm guessing is that work rate is going to lend a lot to team rate. Uh, to uh, sorry, if I can start again, the work rate is going to lend a lot to training this year. And some of the players you might want to keep an eye on is the likes of De Gea, Lukaku, Pereira, Fred, and Matic, who might not pull their weight in training. The likes of Lukaku, you might say, if particularly if he's not playing very well, warn him and criticise his conduct and just say, look, you're not training very well, you're not playing very well, so sort it out or I should get dropped. And that might be a way to get, you know, kick them up the backside. I don't particularly know about training yet, but I'm sure you guys work, you guys work it out for yourselves um, as well as I will. But United, as well as a lot of Premier League clubs, have got state-of-the-art facilities, which are good enough to use anyway. But next, on to transfers that you might be able to bring into the club. We talked a little bit earlier about the lack of uh, depth in right-back. Even though it's a big depth, but there's only a few natural players. And potentially you might want to bring another striker into the club. I don't quite know. There's only two real natural strikers. Sanchez and Martial are more wingers, I would say. If we look at the left wing, yeah. We've got four natural wingers, pretty much. So it's going to be pretty tricky to get into that position. But let's have a look what's been recommended to us by our scouts. Now, we've got Jano Black, who's been... Uh, recommended. He's apparently going to be 50 million, so there's no point going for him. But uh, a player who could be affordable is Mafias Delight. Now, there's some good centre backs at Manchester United. There's no question about that. We've got Eric Boye, Phil Jones, Lindelof, Smalling, and Rojo. But Delight's only 18. His estimated cost will be at, at most 34 million. And there's already a lot of interest in him from a lot of good European clubs Arsenal, Bayern, Inter, Tottenham. Uh, Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, Liverpool. So you want to get in there fairly quickly. See if you can sign Delight. And again, he's going to be well worth it for the 15 years you're going to get him. Um, Kieran Tierney could be another interesting one. A cheap player that could be 25 million, I think, Max. I tell you what, that's quite bright, the Celtic colours. I don't particularly like that. But uh, if you look at his reports, he looks very good. Um, a player that could possibly play in conjunction with Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, you might uh, prioritise Luke Shaw over Tierney. I don't quite know. Very similar players in terms of their age and skills. Uh, but with Ashley Young coming out of the squad, it might be a good to invest in a new left back. With plenty of experience up in the Scottish League, or as I like to call it, Sunday League football. But there's some other players suggested here. Let's have a look who else could we suggest. Um, who's, who's realistic? We said we could look at another striker, couldn't we? But bear in mind, that's not going to come without cost. And if Rashford's young, I suppose that... Mm, do we need another striker? I'm not quite sure. Let's have a look if we we'll see if we can find another young striker, though. Um, let's go up. Maybe Nab Nabil Fekir, that might be a bit extreme. He might be a bit too much money to, to loaf out. I mean, he's eight, we've got 82 million to play with, but I like to keep costs fairly low. Um, I'm struggling to find anyone who's going to be fantastic, to be honest here, is young. Is there anybody in the youth squad? I've just found Kasper Dahlberger could be one to bring in. In the youth setup, there's a few good players, but there's they've got who's he? Nishan Burkhart, who apparently has got a very good potential ability, but I wouldn't trust that because... Some players do go down quite a bit in terms of their potential ability. But Kasper Goldberg's always a popular one football manager, for football manager players such as yourselves. Um, he's 20 years old. His, his value is quite cheap. And he's quite versatile, as you can see. He can play pretty much across the attacking midfield as well as up front. So he could be a young player who could possibly be brought in alongside Rashford. And in the future, I'll tell you what, Rashford and Goldberg would be a scary top two. And of course, you've got uh, Lingard, right over Lukaku... But they've all got plenty of time left in their career. So it's not a young squad, but it's very much a developed squad that could do perhaps with some youth to bolster it up. But that's pretty much going to be it for today's team, guys. There's not really much to say for Manchester United because, as a matter of fact, they've got a very good squad. And just a little bit about my personal opinion, the reason they're doing so badly is because Mourinho plays the wrong way. You know, if, if the blocks of Pogba can't express themselves... Then what is the point, quite frankly? But enough of my personal opinions. That is it for today's video, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And I hope I've covered all the top to the topics of squad, transfers, dynamics, training, tactics, and transfers adequately. And if you think I have, make sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel to see all the other 19 team guides of all the other Premier League clubs. I'm sure they'll be of use to some of you. Um, and also my save in Liverpool, which if you're a Man United fan, you might not like. But don't dislike it. 
don't leave a dislike on those videos. It'd be pretty nasty. Just because you're an IT fan, you all know that Liverpool are the better club anyway. But let's not, you know, make this any longer than we need to be. I've done a team goal. I've done a video on Manchester United. It'll be on my last one of the year, I think, because... Let's face it, a Liverpool fan, Man United, it's just wrong. But I hope you guys have enjoyed nonetheless. I have been TIJ, and I'll see you guys in the next video of mine you watch. Thank you so much for your support and for sticking around for this long, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.